Man, oh man. Every time I see this thing, it just, I love it, man. Everything, the color, the wheels, it's all so good. All right guys, what is happening? Welcome back to Kelvin's Garage yet again for another video today. Today we are, first off, we gotta start off, I gotta rip out some axles and uh, some stuff on this 300. So also, if you guys missed the last video, man, look at look at this. Our RB is completely torn down. It, it didn't take too long. Um, I filmed the whole process, so if you guys wanna see me doing this, this is literally the first time I've completely torn down, excuse me, a motor like this and it went pretty smooth. So we'll talk about this a little bit more when we're back. However, right now, guys, I need to go ahead and, uh, well, first off, we gotta rip our stuff off, and then in a couple minutes, well, or in like 10 min 30 minutes, I gotta leave to get an alignment. So that'll be nice to be able to drive that thing properly, so, you know, not scrubbing our tires. But let's just, uh, let's go ahead. I got one axle to rip out. I already did one side, so let's just finish this up. Got my drink. Dude, honestly, this is definitely one of my favorite, easily, one of my favorite parts of this car. The T-tops are incredible, man. Nice exhaust leak. Yeah. RB coming soon. All right, so don't hate me, but fast forward a couple days and uh, here we are. Car is aligned. I've just been working on the Kuki as in the meantime, I was there two days now in a row. Uh, I was gonna go today, however, I felt like I need to get some filming done and uh, get some content up for you guys. So today, I guess the main portion of the video is gonna be more so like, you know, what the hell is the plan for the 300 in the end? And uh, I guess kind of like the build plan that we wanna see get done. So as far as parts and stuff like that, I also just, I also wanna dive into these two bins right here. These are full of RB25 bar. This bin has been in my shelf for like two years. No idea what's in it anymore. And this one just has, I think, a culmination of stuff I've had laying around and some newer stuff that I have acquired. This is always exciting. Okay. Let's see what we can use in here. Oh, nice. We have a brand new Nissan Shining Belt. Thermostat? This is pro. Yep. Thermostat. Check that out. Okay. We have an ECU. Uh, this is an automatic. If anyone needs it, it'll still work for a manual. Just. You know, it'll still work, so let me know. We have a new crank gear. We'll be needing that for sure. Oh, we have an, a new idler pulley? Dude, awesome. No, there's no way. I don't think these are new or anything. Yeah, these just look like old. Oh, these are from the head. I think they need to be put in or something, the lifters. We have a spare head chilling. I got five coil packs. Who needs them? Oh, anyone need one of these? This is like a throttle body adapter to run like an OEM throttle body. If anyone needs a factory coil pack harness, I got you. Anyone need an injector harness? Cause I got you. Anyone need like idle air control valve stuff? Cause I got you. Here we have some new exhaust studs. Okay. So we have an OEM Cometic head gasket. I will not be running an OEM style. I'm gonna run in a metal style. So if anyone out there needs a brand new Head gasket, I'll probably do like 60 bucks for this thing. All right, cool, we got a brand new intake manifold gasket. We'll need that. Rear main seal. This, probably not gonna run this one. I'll probably get a metal, I don't know, maybe actually I will. This seems pretty okay. You know, seems okay. Let's see what we got in here, shall we? Box number two. Okay, oh yeah, this is, this is definitely some older stuff I had too. Okay, so we have a starter, but I think this starter might be a little funky. Um, so if you guys have a, a good starter, let me know. If you guys need like a CX Racing blow off valve, uh, got one here. We have a fancy alternator bracket. Ah, this is where this is. Bro, we gotta, we gotta do this install, man. We have like an exhaust cutout valve, bro. Shout out to Loud Valves. If you guys are looking for a cutout valve, like they either have boost or vacuum operated ones, um, as well as like manual switch ones, check them out, dude. Loud valves. Check them out on Instagram. Tell them I sent you. Oh, well, all right. I think that takes care of the parts that we have. Let's talk about what we're getting here. Right as, right as we want to go ahead and film something. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, quick heads up, though. So, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty damn sure uh, that these are 
for recycling only. So my buddy that had these on the car said that they're Detchworks, uh, Detroit's, whatever, 900s. Uh, if any of you guys would be interested in these, you let me know. Just hit me up in the comments or, well, preferably just shoot me something on Instagram or an email or something. All right, so I think I just confirmed my theory because this totally makes sense. Ditchworks 900s, six of them. So, you know, this is definitely what they came in. Again, I got a little SARD fuel rail here if you guys want it, you know, just give me like, I don't know, like, the 150 bucks or like 100 bucks even I'll ship it to you for like top feed R RB25s. Anyone just needs like miscellaneous two and a half and three inch pipe if you're local come pick it up man and take it all for 50 bucks and you'll get a little blow off valve. Alright so I figured I would make this because it would just clear the air of I think so many questions and um, it just gives you guys a general idea as to what the plan is for that beautiful red thing back there and uh, what you guys are going to expect. So. Um, this is by no means going to be a 12 month process or anything like that. Uh, if you guys missed the first episode of the whole build, go ahead and check it out, man. We did a complete, full, thorough teardown of the Pasta Power RB25. Uh, if you guys know what I'm talking about, Pasta Power, you guys are the real MVPs. Definitely go ahead and check it out. And uh, today we're going to be talking about the, the the plan moving forward and the parts we're gonna be starting to buy I'm actually gonna hop on a live stream after this and build a cart of parts so hopefully I'll see you guys in the live stream uh, of the stuff that we're gonna need so I guess we'll start from the bottom up of the motor so starting off obviously with the oil pan the oil pan will be a baffled uh, sump it's gonna be a little bit moved back as well due to the fact that we're going in, an, in a Z and uh, that's going to be thanks to the CX Racing Kit uh, that will allow us to fit the motor in without having to modify the subframe and stuff like that. And then also just to touch on, we're going to be using their whole swap kit so that includes mounts, radiator, the whole front mount because it's kind of like a V setup. It's pretty sweet. If you guys have ever seen an RB in a Z, um, you'll notice that there's really no room. So we have to do some crazy stuff with the whole setup and it's going to be awesome. Um, and then moving up, you know, uh, oil pump quickly because this is a big one oil pumps a big one guys now I actually got in contact with super tech and uh, they are awesome They're actually in Australia at least the the, the super tech I'm contact in contact with right now is the super tech in Australia There are other divisions uh, so all the info guys um, Definitely go check them out super tech. They make incredible stuff now just going back to our oil pump Basically, they're hooking it up. They have a used oil pump. However, it's it's a different, it's like an upgraded one. It's like, it has an 81 millimeter gear in it as opposed to a 77 millimeter gear. So it's gonna be a whole lot stronger. Let me, let me show you guys. Let me just, just. So he says it's an OEM 81 millimeter pump. So the gears are thicker than an N1 pump, which are 77 millimeters. So we can't go wrong. That's a solid upgrade. So, and also uh, we're going to be using their oil spline drive kit for that pump, man. So this RB is going to be able to bang limiter and we're not going to be worrying about oiling issues, let alone cracking the gear. You know, we do not want that. Well, since we're talking about super tech guys, they're also going to be helping us out with some R35 coilover conversion brackets. And uh, we're going to be running their AIT sensor as well. As well with the oiling deal for RBs guys, we're also going to install a rear head drain on the back of our head to help with getting the oil out of the head and causing a whole bunch of problems we don't even want to deal with. Now moving up, uh, crank, you know, we're just going to go ahead and polish our crank with some emery cloth. I've been talking to my homie Brad, shout out man, he is now with Haltech. What are they doing? Are they power washing a house? Stop power washing a house! So uh, he is, uh, he's gonna be helping me through the whole engine, he's gonna be helping me through the whole engine build process. He, uh, if I, sorry, distracted me. He now works with Haltech in Kentucky, which is the only Haltech location in the US. Such a knowledgeable guy, such a great guy. And uh, we're actually gonna be taking the Z down to Kentucky as well to get it tuned. If you guys remember the OGs, well, longer time viewers that have been here for about a year or so. Actually, about a year, about a year ago, we took this thing down to Kentucky to get it tuned as well. So if you guys missed that content, it was amazing. What a journey, what a stressful journey. Oh my God, what, there were so many ups and downs. We blew turbos, uh, new ECUs were used. Oh man, so check it out. But regardless, I'm getting off topic. He's gonna be helping us out with the whole engine assembly because I was like, hey man, like, you know, should I be having an engine builder do this or do you think I'm capable of getting some awesome results in my garage? He's like, 
homie, you got this. I'm gonna walk you through it. We'll get this thing mint. So, I'm, um, you know, that's awesome. I love having people like that. You know, people that help support you and you know bring you up. That's awesome. And then moving up, so the crank. We're gonna do upgraded pistons and rods. That's the plan, guys. We're going forged pistons and forged rods. As far as compression ratio, we'll probably shoot for nine to one. And um, head, head gasket will probably be a metal one. Uh, we'll see which brand we go with. Probably about a millimeter thick. We will see. I'm just gonna go ahead and quick, uh, you know, quickly hone the block, get the cylinder walls nice and fresh again. Uh, uh, even though they have really nice cross hatching already on them, so it's in really good shape. And since we're running a a uh, metal head gasket guys we're gonna be going ahead and uh, basically we have to machine the block super flat so it seals perfectly and uh, our head was already it's already been in the machine shop however should I'm wondering do you guys think that I should take that head back just to get it rechecked I mean it's just been sitting there in this garage for the past like two years untouched so uh, just wrapped in like a towel and bag and stuff like that so so I think that, that basically that basically covers the block we're gonna do like you know new bearings and stuff like that probably new main studs and then obviously we'll get the whole thing painted up and looking really nice now our goal I guess I should talk our goal I guess for the end of this thing is like you know somewhere between 550 on pump gas and you know 700 on E85 really Keep it down! All right, fast forward like 30 minutes. I don't even know where we left off. But uh, the plan, I guess, for the motor, I, I think we're talking about power goals. So it'd be awesome to make at least 600 wheel horsepower. Uh, that is the plan. Uh, it kind of all will kind of come down to our fuel system and our turbo in the end. Uh, fuel injectors to get over like 500, 600 wheel horsepower are very expensive. Uh, so, uh, like I said, if you guys want to go ahead and pick these up, these only have about 2,000 miles on them, hit me up. Uh, I'm pretty sure they retail for $530 new. I'll sell them to you. If you guys want to pick them up for $400, I think that's a phenomenal deal. So, if we can get a fuel system to support 700 wheel horsepower and a turbo setup to support that horsepower, then yes, we'll definitely go there. Uh, like I said, it all are just going to dwindle down to that because the kit, the, the CX Racing kit comes with a turbo and I actually asked them, I requested for their ball bearing upgrade, which is actually is capable of more horsepower, but I just don't know if it's going to be able to get where we want to get with the build. So, you know, I'll toss a message out to Garrett, I'll toss a message out to Precision and stuff like that. We'll kind of see what happens, uh, who knows. But I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we can get this process started and going very, very soon. So I'm going to order all the stuff from SuperTech, but whatever. I mean, this, is just, this is just a rundown of what the plan is. So uh, it comes with a manifold. The CX Racing one comes with a manifold. It's an equal length manifold. So we're going to start out with that. That's going to be awesome. Obviously, it would be obviously it'd be great to, to be able to run a Cinco manifold or a 6 boost or something like those lines to, you know. But... The budget isn't there just yet, so uh, you know, in time, I'm sure we'll upgrade the car and you know, continue to build on it. But the CX manifolds will be just fine. Uh, also, you know, with the kit it comes with downpipe and stuff like that, so we should be all right until, obviously, as I mentioned, if we can get a different turbo setup, then we'll go ahead and do some other crazy stuff, and then who knows? Uh, you know, things can obviously escalate. You know, so and then that's that's the exhaust side taken care of, and then the head, guys. We have the fresh one. It has a light hand port job, which I was looking at it. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, I'm, you know, but I was told it does. I got it from my buddy, so I don't know why he would lie to me. And then uh, we just need cams, so I'm thinking like some 270 cams. We're gonna get some springs for it. We're gonna keep stock valves. Uh, so that's kind of the head, you know, where some 270s, springs, everything else will be okay. Uh, I think it also has upgraded valve uh, guides and seals and stuff like that, so that's pretty cool. At least, at least new OEM ones. So that'll take care of the head, and um, I mean, yeah, man, we're gonna go with a uh, zero fab intake manifold. It's gonna, it's beautiful. It's billet. It's gorgeous. You guys are gonna see that. We'll be buying that pretty soon. And then obviously, again, guys, if you want to go ahead and purchase a sticker, man, I still have the KG wheel sticker stickers available, and then also we brought back the oil slick, the classic oil slick uh, Calvin's Garage sticker, so it would really help out the channel a whole hell of a lot if you guys want to go ahead and grab one they should the the kg mafia the old um the older uh, calvin's garage stickers the oil slick ones should be here very very soon so i should be able to start sending them out within a week or two uh hopefully you know as fingers crossed they they get here in time i hate how rbs get such a bad rap because people just don't build them properly or don't modify them properly or don't don't set them up properly and they just come into problems granted the RB20, it's just a rock, you know, it's it's awesome. It just it just takes it and loves it. It stays at 8,000 RPM all day and just asks for more the next. So it's awesome. I really do love that motor, but we're for here. 
We're gonna be making some real power. This is only making, to the tire, we're making 380, which is for uh, 37 crank horsepower, which is calculated in by 15%, but whatever. Um, the number we care about is 380 to the tire, and it's everything stock. You know, everything is stock besides ARP head studs, and we have a newer OEM head gasket. That's it. So hopefully this kind of gave you a general rundown and idea as far as what we're going to be doing to this build and what you guys should expect. And um, hopefully we get this thing kind of complete and getting, you know, get it going very, very soon. I'm going to start figuring out, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to hop on this live stream, get a, a, a cart of parts that we need and start buying stuff, and uh, let's get this thing moving. Hopefully my wallet doesn't hate me too much. I'm really still trying to look for a lot of support. Uh, competition Clutch is going to be hopping on board, which is awesome with the clutch and flywheel setup. Huge shout out. Wiring Specialties is going to be hopping on board for a wiring harness that's going to make this swap just straight up plug and play and super easy. So can't wait. Um, still have some contacting to do to see if we can get some other help. But uh, we'll get there. I know we will. This is going to be one amazing build. One thing I do want to ask you guys, I'm thinking, so far what I'm thinking, we're obviously going to paint the engine bay in the 300, right? We can't leave it the way it is. It's disgusting. So we're going to make it super nice. We're going to take all the seam sealer out, make it really nice, maybe even shave some stuff, um, tuck some stuff, you know, make it look really nice and clean. I'm thinking just like a really nice, dark, deep black like a really nice gloss black with maybe some red flake or some sort of flake in the paint or maybe just leave it gloss black I don't know and uh, from there maybe I'm, I'm still just leaning towards doing another red valve cover man like I've had my red valve cover on my 240 for four years and that was the first thing I really wanted when I got the motor and I was like man I mean ever since I was a kid the only thing I really enjoyed was a red valve cover like I loved that so who knows you guys have been saying midnight purple but um I don't know. Alright guys, that's gonna be it. Hopefully I didn't bore you guys to death. Uh, thank you for those that are still watching, man. But this is just gonna be, I, I don't I don't normally do these type of videos and don't expect this is like a common thing, just me talking to the camera. However, I just wanted to give you guys a general idea as to what's happening, what the plan is, where we're going, and uh, things are happening. I'm super, super excited. Um, this is gonna be awesome, man. This is gonna be awesome. So if you guys uh, want to hit that subscribe button and join along for the journey, the sun's coming out, bro. I haven't seen the sun in like four days. It would really be awesome if you guys could hit that subscribe button, join in on the journey. It's gonna be an awesome build, man. This is gonna be such a fun car, and we're gonna be really throwing down some power, and it's gonna be a blast. Um, I can't wait to just hear this thing fired up. It's gonna be so awesome, and uh, obviously it's torn apart right now. I'm talking about firing it up, but. Hopefully we can get this thing done very, very quickly. And with your guys' support, I know we can. Again, grab a sticker if you guys are able. Shout out to my patrons because you guys, because of you guys, this is also helping to build out a whole hell of a lot. If you guys would like to become a patron and, uh, you know, get content a day early and, uh, you know, just be a part of the support team, man. It would really mean a lot. So thanks again. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a lot on the plate, man. I gotta drop the transmission again on my 240. Oh my God, it's just crazy. But uh, stuff with my 300, this 300, the Kuki's coming up. We're gonna be firing that thing up really soon. So a lot of stuff to come. We have some mods on the 300 we gotta do. So I'll see you guys soon. Thanks again, man. Hopefully you guys are stoked. I'm so stoked. Let's get this RB25 built. Let's make some power. Let's go to Kentucky, man. <laughs> Let's get this thing on the dyno. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.